That's my song. Thank you so much, girls. Woo! Amen. I feel it. Hallelujah. Woo! Yes. All right. right. I think the nominated committee got to put my name down for the um this commute. Because I was truly blessed right there. Praise the Lord. Amen. Um, so, boys and girls, this is for you at home, online. Oh, I got to bring my heart rate down. <laughs> so, Thanksgiving is a time of praise and celebration. Right, boys and girls? Yes. All right. It is a time for remembering the gifts and the blessings that God has given to us. Now, the Bible is full of Thanksgiving stories telling us to be appreciative of what we have. After all, right, contentment and gratefulness has always been a part of the Lord's teachings, right? So that's why during this time of Thanksgiving, this upcoming holiday, it is important to reflect on what truly matters, using the word as our guide, right? So let's go back to the true essence of Thanksgiving. So like I said before, boys and girls, and older boys and girls, there are so many stories of thankfulness in the Bible. Take, for example, the story of the lepers, which is found in Luke 17, 11 to 19. All right, let's just pull it up here. And it says, now on his way to Jerusalem, Jesus traveled along the border between Samaria and Galilee. As he was going into the village, Ten men who had leprosy met him. So boys and girls, you know what leprosy is. We did a children's story about that, right, where you had open sores on you and it was painful. Um, these men, they stood at the distance and called out in a loud voice, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. When, they saw, when he saw them, he said, go, show yourselves to the priests. And they went, they were cleansed of all of them, when he saw he was healed, one came back praising God in a loud voice. He threw himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him, and he was a Samaritan. Jesus asked, were not all ten cleansed? Where are the other nine? Has no one returned to give praise to God except this foreigner? Then he said to him, Rise and go. Your faith have made you well. Oh, yes. Right? So, boys and girls, out of the ten lepers that Jesus healed, only one went back to thank him. This man, completely free of, from illness, but full of faith, knelt at Jesus' feet, thanking him for showing mercy. Because of his gratitude, God healed him far deeper to me and more than the other nine men were healed. When Jesus said in verse 19, rise and go, your faith has made me well, to me it appears that that man's soul was actually healed, right, as well. Something that only our love and appreciation for God can achieve. Yes. So um, I want to bring it back. That was a Bible story, boys and girls, but I want to bring it back to something a little probably more relatable for you, and I want to share a little story about gratitude, right? So let me turn it this way. A blind boy sat on the steps of a building with a hat by his feet. What did I say? A, no, a, a blind boy, right? Okay. In my head, it sounded like I said a bad boy. But a blind boy sat on the steps of a building with a hat by his feet. He held up a sign which read, I am blind, please help. There were only a few coins in the hat, spare change from folks as they hurried by. A man was walking by. He took a few coins out of his pocket and dropped it into the hat. Then he took that same sign out of the boy's hand, turned it around, and wrote some words on the back. Then he put the sign back in the boy's hand so that everyone who walked by would see the new words. Soon the hat began to fill up. A lot more people were given money to this young blind boy. That afternoon, the man who had changed the sign returned to see how things were going. The boy recognized the man's footsteps and asked, hey, 
Were you not the one who changed my sign this morning? What did you write? The man said, I only wrote the truth, but I said it in a different way. For us teachers, that's differentiated instruction, right? I wrote, today is a beautiful day, but I cannot see it. Both signs spoke the truth, but the first sign simply said the boy was blind, while the second sign conveyed to everyone walking by how grateful they should be that they have sight. When your life, boys and girls, seems full of troubles, it seems difficult to maintain an attitude of gratitude, doesn't it, right? We start to think and worry about all the things that are going wrong, oh, we didn't pass a test, we didn't get the outfit that we wanted, or we didn't get to get, go to the hairdresser, or whatever it is, right? It seems like that dark cloud is casting a shadow over your life. And at times, even, when everything seems to be going smoothly, you passed your test, your friends are the greatest, you got the outfit that you wanted to wear to church, um, you got to go to the hairdresser, um, we can also take these precious, precious moments for granted too. We're caught up by the bliss and the comfort and familiarity of it all. We can simply forget to be thankful. So then, boys and girls, what is gratitude? Simply put, gratitude, I like to say, is a habit. It's a way of looking at the world and all the good things in it with a feeling of appreciation, regardless of regardless of whether or not your current situation is to your liking. So gratitude is a heart-centered approach to being at peace with yourself and with all you have. When you practice, boys and girls, this feeling of gratitude and thankfulness, it attracts more things into your life for which to be grateful. So boys and girls, even at home, go ahead and try it right now. What or who do you have in your life right now to be thankful for? Amen. I am thankful for my, chef, my friend Michelle all the way in sunny Florida. Today is her birthday, and I want to give you a big sister shout out. Happy birthday, Mish. We love Amen. you. Amen. Amen. Amen, boys and girls. Enjoy your Thanksgiving. <laughs>